Hey, this is Maine, and welcome to my Outriders Demo Impressions video, where I give my initial thoughts on the current look, sound, and feel of Outriders before it releases on April 1st, 2021. I'll be talking about the things I mentioned such as the story, gameplay, sound, and how the game looks in its present state. Keep in mind that these are my opinions on the demo alone, and do not reflect my thoughts on what to expect upon the full release of Outriders. Before I continue, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you like it, a thumbs down if you don't, and subscribe if you'd like to be notified whenever a new video is posted. With that out of the way, let's venture into the world of Outriders. First up is Story. Outriders, a game that comes to you by way of Square Enix and the folks at People Can Fly, is a game that lets you play as an Outrider, a member of a team whose mission is to be the first to land on a planet that is deemed worthy of colonization. The planet in question is Enoch, one that has many different biomes with its own flora and fauna design. Much like Anthem and Gears of War, there was a sense that the world you set foot on was filled with lots of beauty, but it was home to things that wanted you dead and gone as soon as possible. You and your team are tasked with finding and recovering the probes that were sent out in hopes of surveying and compiling the data that would determine if colonizing Enoch resulted in the green or red light. Over time, however, you come to realize that this particular group of Outriders aren't exactly seen the way Pathfinders were in Mass Effect Andromeda. Without going too much into detail, there are several groups who feel that the Outriders on Enoch are more like the Suicide Squad with the privilege and prestige of the Justice League. As the player, you encounter a mission in which a storm known only as the Anomaly touches down and jeopardizes both your mission and your life as you and others are struck by the Anomaly. While the majority of the people pretty much get Thanos snapped into oblivion, that was not to be your fate. You survive and are transformed into an Altered, a being that's able to harness and manipulate different aspects of the elements and thus begins your true journey in the game. Looks is next. First, I'd like to mention that what you're seeing here is me running the game on a Ryzen 7 CPU with 16 gigs of RAM and a RTX 2070 Super at 1080p. I was able to run the game at a super sampled 4K resolution on my monitor and looked and ran fine. I noticed instances where the foliage and other textures was a lot cleaner and up res 4K, but for the sake of consistency and to avoid overkill, this did just fine. As mentioned earlier, Outrider seems to show influences from a few games that I've played. The world is very Anthem, Mass Effect, Andromeda, and Dragon Age Inquisition-esque with its uses of deep color and weather geography and set pieces. However, the opening area of the demo reminded me of the forest areas used in some of the Halo games with its large open mountainous regions filled with trees as far as you can see. I actually really like this. I haven't played many games recently that feature the scale that's presented here. Destiny 2 has an area that resembles this, but it's done in a much smaller way than what Outriders is doing here. The other biomes featured in the game range from a forest area seen here and a range of others such as desert, swamp, and rocky bluffs. The armor and vehicles reminded me of a mix of Mass Effect and Gears of War aesthetics that somehow give off a look that is original and can stand on its own if presented in a who wore it best Alien Planet edition. This is in regards to the suit you start with, but over time the look of your clothing tends to remind me of some of the stuff you'd find in a game like the Technomancer, with a mashup of Space Desert Chic and something you'd find in a game like Fallout or Wasteland. This might turn some people off that are very particular about clothing and how it adds to the world building. While not exactly cutting it for me, I respect the way they tailored their vision of the storytelling and not going with a cut and paste approach. They took some time to find a look and it works here. The guns also lend itself to this by allowing you to play with weapons that look and feel like a memory you weren't sure was yours, but decided to just go with it and see what devastation they unleashed as you go. Very nice. Let's go over sound. When it comes to the sounds that make up the demo portion of Outriders, I feel as though you want to present you with a product that is set on the sci-fi, high stakes, story heavy package that I think people can fly delivers here. From the sounds of the guns, the dialogue, and the way it's delivered, even the ambient noises you hear as your character traverses the world, it all feels the way it's meant to. I think that if you've played it, you might agree with what I'm saying. The same way that the music and sounds in games like Mass Effect and even recent releases like Neo 2, it's very important to the immersion of player experiences and they do a great job in that area. I will say though, 
that there were some instances where the way some of the lines of dialogue were delivered felt hollow or didn't have the gravitas that aligned with the current situation at the time. I'll try there. Does your kind is all dead? Dead? Uncuff me and find out! The anomaly is coming. Let's see how fast you can run! Then again, as a fan of games like Greedfall and Technomancer, it didn't really bother me as much as it might the next player. When it comes to the audio during combat, everything really sounds like something straight out of a Gears game and I like that. From the punch you hear from the auto rifle, to the way the crack of the shotgun opens and trails off throughout the room after blasting a guy in the chest as he comes at you, like he was told to kill you, or he was going to have to sleep next to a landmine if he failed. It all sounds very similar to Gears, and for those who have played the first few games, you'll enjoy the presentation here. There are other times where the game stands its own ground in this department, like the way you can hear the ice form and crackle as the Technomancer's minds do their thing, or even the way the turret you throw out is fitted with a silencer, like the arms dealer who created it wanted everyone's interest, including Agnes the Librarian. Everything here is done well in my opinion, and even surprised me at certain times with the detail and depth that I experienced, and I look forward to what's done in the full release. Hope y'all brought your galoshes. Next up is gameplay. Few games have been able to take elements from other games and twist and warp them into something that seems both familiar and new. I think Outriders does a great job of that here. I really do. If I could mention all of the games that I was able to find parallels to, it'd be games like Gears of War, Mass Effect, Destiny 2, and The Division 2. Out of the gate, this is a narrative-driven, looter-shooter RPG hybrid, and you can feel it. The space has been sought after since, I mean, Destiny took that space over. I mean, you could shoot, loot, get stronger, all the while telling a story that is grander than it seems on the surface. When it comes to the shooting, it's done in a third-person perspective that involves running, rolling, and using cover, much like Division 2, where you can also look at another form of cover and hold a button down to run to it. However, the feel of all of that really reminded me of Gears. It has weight to it, and is at times very satisfying. The moments that I did find myself frustrated, though, were during times when I wanted to use cover only to look like I was playing a game of musical cover with cover that wouldn't let me cover. I'm sure that this is the thing that would get patched, but it took me out of the fight in those instances for sure. That and the multiplayer component had me waiting for up to five minutes to find another group of battle-ready altar to fight with, to no avail. Even when the game went into matchmaking mode, I found, well, that I continued solo. Hopefully, this also gets looked at. Along with the great sound design, like I mentioned before, the sound of the game coupled with the freedom and feedback from the controller just felt like something that rewarded your time playing the game in nuanced ways that again felt familiar, but fresh. One other thing I should mention, these NPCs are relentless. I found myself easily cornered many times and retreating to safety, finding that these baddies were down to chase. You can see in this clip that they weren't going to give up. You know what? I love this. I love it when games present me with foes that aren't going to fall back as soon as I have just enough space to get in and out of sight. I also loved how in that instance, it was in a very tight area and the devs made sure to make it feel like all the attention was on you. And I felt it 100%. Great job in that aspect. The loop in this game is reminiscent of other games in the space that range from white or common all the way up to purple and golden colored legendary and exotic weapons that look and feel how I'd expect them to. The design of these weapons really add to the sci-fi desert look I talked about before. Weapons and armor have perks and cool mods that change the way your gun functions or operates in other capacities. One weapon I used had the ash perk, which made enemies burst into flames when shot at. When it comes to progression, the player is presented with four classes. You have the trickster, which reminded me of a rogue that could bend time and space to use stasis-like attacks to get in close and gain the upper hand. I felt that while this class could be played solo, there was a certain element of strategy that you need to stay alive. 
Then you have the Technomancer, which is the long-range support that focuses on ice-based gadgets like mines and unmanned turrets and mortars. This is the one I went with during this video and it provided me with a challenge. I could provide my own backup, but at a cost of needing to know when to place and use them to stay safe. It's not a solo-friendly class at all. The Pyromancer is the mage or conjurer-like class that is based on fire attacks, like others I've talked to. Playing this class does remind me of the way you move about the game kind of like Doom. It just felt like you were constantly on the move blowing everything up to pieces and getting rewarded with health in the process. This is a more solo friendly route that I would recommend someone new to this game. Then there was the Devastator, the earth based tank that is the powerhouse in every sense of the word. This class allows you to do some pretty insane things such as shockwave attacks like Reinhardt's Overwatch Ultimate, the ability to grant earth armor, and an ability that sees you jumping into the air and then slamming down on your enemies like the Destiny 2's Titan Thundercrash Super. These classes are really fun to play, but the one area I did have a gripe about was how the progression tree was done. Outriders goes with a stat-based tree that pretty much just tweaks certain areas of your choosing, like damage here or less damage here, damage reduction there, cooldown reduction here. I felt that they had an opportunity to do something that Destiny 2 has yet to do and give us players more control over changing the way our abilities worked. Sure, in Destiny 2 there's three subclasses, but they pale in comparison to D1's choice of options where I could stand next to another warlock and have a different look and feel to how my build operates in theirs. Here it feels less fun and more like a min-maxers kind of thing. That's fine, but not what I was hoping for. Overall, I'd say that this game is shaping up to be worth the hype. Whether that's a good or bad thing in this day and age is up to speculation and opinion. The looks, sound, story, and gameplay do enough to keep someone who loves this mix of genres engaged and interested in what's to come. Are there some missteps? Sure. However, I've always been able to give the benefit of the doubt in these situations. And in this case, a demo is indeed one of those times. I think that this game may not dethrone competitors like Destiny 2 or The Division 2. Yet, this game isn't service-based, so once the game is complete, that's it. This could also give the devs the ambition to make sure that what we get is a complete package of their vision of the game. If you're a fan of looter shooter games with a focus on story, this one is for you. I say to check your expectations at the title screen and just enjoy what's offered here because it's pretty good so far. I hope you enjoyed the video, and again if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, and subscribe if you'd like to stay current on all future content I post here. Check out my next video where I talk about deciding to start my YouTube channel and the things that helped me face some of my fears. Until then, take care of each other. We're all we have.